Wednesday evening, patients at Uhaire, whose real name shall be concealed in compliance with the request after she reconsidered the same, was fleeced of 1.6 million shillings in a telephone fraud. Coincidentally, she had just received the money from one of her children when the scammers called her to carry out their scheme. <laughs> My son, who lives in Saudi Arabia, sent the money to help me address some challenges. Earlier, Papote telecom operator had called her, threatening to switch off her phone, which left her vulnerable to manipulation as she believed it to be a legitimate call for genuine help. I trusted them because MTN had previously asked me to register once more, and I did it. When they called me back for a second time, I had no doubt. After all, the SIM wasn't previously registered under my name. She sent the money in two phases as the fraudster still had the courage to manipulate her to take whatever was left in the account. They gave me two numbers to write down. However, when I cross-checked, I found out that the first number withdrew money from my phone. Then the same thing happened with the second number. The money was sent to an Airtel SIM instead of the empty number the imposter called on. The reason why the scammer directed the money to be sent to a different SIM number can be explained by another attempt by a fraudster to also manipulate me. A day before Atuhaire was conned, I too received a call from a lady imposter who used an MTN number 0780249282. Soon after threatening that my number would be switched off within 30 minutes for failure to update personal record with the operator, she offered to help sort it out. My brother, do you know how to check your registration status? I eh? know uh, you maybe you need to direct me on how to do that. All right, don't uh, worry. Uh, so, right now, you're going to dial start first to the service, the new service operation. Uh, you you press the star 132 hash. Uh -huh. I chose to be loyal in order to understand the trick. The call lasted several minutes. The help required entering certain codes into personal mobile phone, and even as I pretended to do so, the imposter could tell that I had not complied. You're using a smartphone, button phone? No, button phone. If it is a button phone, do what I'm telling you. Don't write it down, because we are on time. We will not wait for you to, 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 to do it, yeah? Okay, you press the star with me, star. Uh-huh. Are you done with this star? Uh, yes, I'm dialing star. One, one, three, three, two hash, two hash. You're writing, you're not dialing. The call ended with an abuse, certainly after the telephone operator who called me noticed that I was pulling her leg. You press on the very phone you're speaking to, please. Okay, um, you said you're madam who? You're very stupid. Come to the service center, idiot. We declined to enter the digits, missing out on us the opportunity to learn more about the tricks, but we were keen not to compromise personal gadget. The first attempt to identify the name behind the call fell flat. At this moment, I do not know the person who was behind the call, and as such, I'm going to try to send the person the money generously on, my, on mobile money to try to see under which names is the SIM card registered. A generous decision to send money to the imposter would have provided the name on which the SIM is registered, but alas, the feedback message indicated it was not registered for the transaction. Certainly, it is the primary reason Atuhairi was instructed to send the money to another number that the fraudster could easily withdraw from. Another generous attempt was to purchase airtime for this telephone operator, and boom, it was registered under the names of Israel Evans Bossa, which should be a male's name, yet the person behind the call was a lady. 
Under the circumstance, it is difficult to tell with certainty whether the SIM was deliberately registered under the names for purposes of defrauding unsuspecting members of the public used illegally from a snatched phone. The national identification number needed for registration of the SIM was obtained from a lost national ID or the record may have been obtained from one of those places personal information is required. The communication sector regulator highlights all of the above as possibilities. We know that there are some vulnerabilities in the SIM card registration and activation process whereby when you go to buy a SIM card, someone can trick you into entering your biometrics more than once. Government in 2017 undertook mandatory registration of SIM cards with personal details primarily to cap down on crimes committed with the aid of mobile phones. The exercise is a mandatory requirement to date. But communications regulator says only little can be done to stop the fraudsters. We've gone countrywide to try and educate people. But even as we educate the public, even the Wafede listening to the same message and update their tricks. The lockdown is blamed for fueling the vice. And as a result of the increased usage, we also had an increase in the people out there who were trying to manipulate the increased usage. Concerns. Over the last few months, you know, the incidence of fraud, mobile money fraud, has increased significantly. Okay? You see, as MTN, we are trying, we, we have built a very secured mobile money platform. Okay? What we try to do is, whether it's the USSD, whether it's USSD string, whether it's the mobile money app, we have built enough protections for customers. Our desire to understand the magnitude of the problem based on reported cases failed as police directed that this shall be reflected on the year to be released annual crimes report. Currently we have 17 ongoing cases, 11 of which are before the courts and 6 of which are still in the investigative process. The communications regulator, Uganda Communications Commission, advises on the need to be vigilant and cautious whenever one is using electronic services since all they can do at the moment to protect them is mass sensitization against the vice. What this means is that the illiterate and the elderly will remain vulnerable at this time because the experts admit that the fraudsters are always ahead of them. Jackson Onyango, reporting for NTV.